Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today we're jumping right into Road to Ranked. In the last episode, we used a really interesting Dialga team. Details are in the description below. So let's just get started with today's episode. Thanks so much as always for watching. And for the first game, we're up against Calyrex Shadow Rider. It's actually been a while, I feel like, since we've gone up against Calyrex Shadow Rider. Now this is interesting because like Porygon 2 actually makes a lot of sense here because it gets access to foul play and also doesn't take much damage from Calyrex. Hmm. We could even go with Gothitelle plus Porygon. Uh, I think leading Landorus is not a good idea because if, if we end up giving my Lodic a competitive boost, it's already really difficult to come back from that. So I certainly don't want to lead with Landorus. Uh, Porygon Dialga works actually because I can just trick him into a max move. I don't think Gothitelle trapping is super good for us here because of the Calyrex Shadow Rider on their end. I don't think trapping is super important. So I like Ditto in the back. Landers as a last one is still somewhat compelling, but I think Togekiss also just does good damage across the board with Dazzling Gleam and could even be a max option if like I don't love maxing Dialga on turn one of the game. But I think Porygon's actually very nice for the Calyrex Shadow Rider match um matchup here because I can basically resist or I'm immune to all the ghost type attacks, right? So Astral Barrage doesn't do anything to us. If you max, you're not that scary either. And Trick Room makes sense here because my opponent's team definitely indexes more on the faster end with Whimsicott Alecky and the Calyrex. So, yeah. Thanks so much as always for watching. If you enjoyed, please share support by leaving a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it. And question of the day, kind of just a generic question. It doesn't have to be related to VGC, but I'm curious what you're just looking forward to in general in Pokemon. Uh, and for me, I think it's just uh, the next VGC format just because Series 11 we've been playing for a while now. So that would be my answer. Anyway, it's going to be a Lecky plus my Lodic as the lead. Uh, okay. My main fear here uh, is Hypnosis, my Lodic. That would be a problem. Because what I want to go for is... doesn't even make that much sense to Trick Room on turn one. I could always use Ditto to copy them, which is interesting. But I don't know if I love that on turn one. Uh, boosting a Porygon and giving it special defense boosts and just making it difficult to knock out also doesn't seem half bad. So a Trick Room into a Max Quake seems okay here. It's just that if my Lodic does have Hypnosis and you just go for it onto Dialga turn one as it Dynamaxes, this could be really ugly. But if they don't have Hypnosis, I actually think we're in a phenomenal position. Are they Dynamaxing a Lecky? I'm completely okay with that if that's the case. Interesting. I think this makes sense, though. I think logically what my opponent's probably thinking is, hey, if I Dynamax Alecky now, then I can try to knock out Porygon. If I knock out Porygon, then uh, it paves the way for Calyrex Shadow Rider in the end game Because Porygon's the one thing that resists or is immune to Astral Barrage, right? So it would make sense that you would want to prioritize KOing it so then Calyrex can just come in and spam Astral Barrage. But the issue for them now, I think, is that one... They're going to most likely max lightning. You could also max strike into hypnosis here, but I think most likely it's going to be max lightning. And if max lightning comes out, then hypnosis just doesn't work because you set up the electric terrain. So I'm honestly very content with this. Um, I, I even think Porygon should survive this. That did nothing. Yeah, th they're already in a really tough spot, I think. Just because you committed your Dynamax to Aleki, which isn't exactly the strongest max option on their team, given this matchup, because they can't do anything into Dialga. And if Max Quake just one-shots, I don't really see how they can actually come back, honestly. It does get the one-hit KO. Yeah, um, that's a surprising max. I was expecting a Protect or maybe a Volt Switch into, like, Rillaboom, for example. But now it covers even the one fear I had, which was Hypnosis on my Lodic. So, I guess they were just expecting to do a little bit more damage or maybe hoping I didn't have Max Quake and that I was going to, like, Warm Wind or target the my Lodic slot instead. Uh, and they're going to go for a Scald. Yeah, I, we're, gonna, we're probably going to survive that. Yeah, they just do so little damage, especially because I got the um, special defense boost on it now as well. Because so now I get Trick Room up and, like, Porygon can just heal up, right? If they bring out Fake Out user like Rillaboom and Ensign, then we'll probably just want to switch Porygon out. Uh, we can go into the... Uh, if they bring Ensign out, then we can go into Milotic. If they bring Rillaboom out, then we can go to Togekiss. And it's going to be Ensign. Okay, perfect. So with Ensign out, now I can copy your Milotic. That's pretty nice. They are probably... Like, <laughs> we get to see Porygon's competitive activate, but fortunately that doesn't do anything here. 
Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up just going for, like, the parting shot into Dialga, but I honestly really don't care because we have such an early lead and advantage right now. The one thing we want to do is just make sure we don't have to be competitive on my Lodic and give it a chance to come back. So it feels a little bit bad to switch out here just because, like, Porygon already has the special defense boost, but the thing is that Trick Room is up right now, right? And so I can always recover even on the last turn of Trick Room. Uh... It's, it's one of those scenarios where, you know, often your opponents are going to try to protect a stall out trick room. And that's where recover is so handy because uh, while, like, the partner Pokemon is pressuring with damage, Porygon can just click recover. So I'd rather switch out here just because Porygon is such a good answer into the Calyrex Shadow Rider just with foul play alone, especially because now they don't even have a Dynamax to play towards. So, yeah. I do think Maxing Lucky makes sense in this, like, idea that... Like, are you really going to want to max Calyrex, for example, right? That doesn't feel amazing. Um, uh, they actually just opt for Flare Blitz. Okay, that's interesting. I'm totally okay with that. Uh, Mental, I could have maybe stayed in and clicked Recover, but I think it's fine to cover for the Fake Out option there. And they're just going to Scald. Cool. So Ditto takes that perfectly. We've even copied them. Great. Take around 50% of our health. A little bit over. Um, and let's see if this gets a one-hit KO. Nice. Dialga is putting in so much work. And th this is the upside of, like, Life Orb Dialga, right? You have remarkable coverage. So much to the point where, like, there aren't really any Pokemon that can resist, like, all four of its attacks, right? Meaning that at some point, like, you, you are pressuring most non-Dynamax Pokemon with a one-hit KO, which I think makes this Dialga set really fun. So, I'm sure Calyrex is their last one. We even now get to confirm their uh, Milotic moveset, which is really nice, and I already have plus two special defense on Dialga, so I don't even think they can handle Dialga at this point. But once again, the one thing we want to avoid is just activating competitive on Calyrex right now. Or sorry, on Milotic. So plus one special defense, we still have three turns of Trick Room, and their moveset is Protect, Recover, Scald, and Icy Wind. So let's make sure we don't click the Icy Wind, because I don't want to activate competitive. Uh, recover here, and then just Quake into Calyrex is super safe. We now know that my Lodic has no damage output or no pressure in a Dialga, and actually they just end up forfeiting, so yeah. Uh, I think this was a game in which Dialga already just had a really good matchup, Porygon 2 also had a good matchup, and like they just didn't have the best Dynamax options against us, and not even KOing Porygon made the game really dif difficult for them. I think their idea was probably they were willing to trade their Dynamax, um if it meant to knock out on a Porygon, because then at least you can bring out Calyrex. But even if that had happened, like, let's say I don't get the Trick Room up, it's still, like, you know, we would knock out a Leki, and then Dialga could just, like, you know, one-shot a lot of uh, the remaining Pokemon on my opponent's end. Um, and maybe part of what they were also hoping for is that I didn't have Max Quake and just didn't Quake into them on turn one, right? And hoping that I would, like, Warm Wind or Steel Spike instead. But um, my idea was, well, you know, my Lodic isn't... My Lodic's scary if they have Hypnosis, so that's like the one thing I was un you know, unsure about. Like, let's say they're max speed my Lodic and they just go for Hypnosis on turn 1 onto the, uh, Dialga. That could be really bad. Um, but I didn't know how to fully play around that while also feeling comfortable um, with like all the other possibilities, for example. So, yeah. Uh, but I think that game just highlights how strong Dialga can be, where, you know, just one shots a Dynamax uh, Pokemon. Now, granted, Aleki is very frail, but still to be able to get a one-hit KO is obviously huge. And the other thing is, you know, you have a really strong Max Quake and Max Steel Spike, so you can also boost your stats further. And so after turn one, I thought it would be really difficult for my opponent to come back because I just didn't see how they, you know, do damage into Dialga, basically, because you needed a Dynamax, essentially, to deal with Dialga. So, yeah, uh, Dialga just continues to demonstrate how it can be really, really uh, powerful as an offensive attacker in this format. So let's keep it going. All right, second match of the day, and it's actually another Calyrex Shadow Rider team. I feel like it's been a while since we played these, so to go back-to-back -back is really interesting. Uh, Porygon and Dialga was my lead in the last game. It worked out decently. Uh, if Gothito had a Trick Room here, I'd actually consider leading it, but it doesn't. I think our approach in the last one was fine. Part of me wonders if I should bring Landorus, but... Like, they don't even have that many physical attackers. The only thing Intimidate actually works against is their landers. Or if we can just crit through with Wicked Blow anyway. I generally think this is okay. Um, I, I guess the thing is, if you're using my opponent's team, or if you're in their shoes, for example, then you absolutely do not want Trick Room to go up. So then your ways to deny would be either taunting my Trick Room users or just KOing them on turn one. Taunt's interesting if you're using it on Whimsica because there is Lele on their team. So, like, I could have led with Gothitelle, which would have been able to trap them in, but they go with Lele and Caloric Shadow Rider. Okay, this is actually very decent for us, I think. It 
kind of comes down to... Uh, they could max Calyrex and max Psychic Porygon, right? Huh. That would be interesting. Um, what if we did this? How crazy would that be? <laughs> kind of crazy. I, I guess the thing is they don't know that, like, like Dialga totally could have Trick Room here as well, right? So you can't really cover for both Pokemon Trick Rooming on turn one of the game. I could just see Expanding Force into a Psychic type attack onto the Porygon slot. That would not be ideal. I guess Ditto then could maybe copy something at least. I could see that maxing and max psychicking in a Porygon. Um, I don't think I get Trick Room up with it, honestly. I went for Wormwind, but I think it's better to go for a Quake because I don't think I'm surviving a Wormwind anyway. Although, uh, or sorry, I was gonna say I don't think I'd knock out Dynamax Calyrex anyway with the Wormwind, but they're actually not Dynamaxing, which can be good. So I wonder if it's just Expanding Force Spam? Because if we get Trick Room up, I think it's nearly impossible for my opponent to win. Okay, it is just Expanding Force. Porygon takes that decently well. They're just going to give up their Restricted Mon. Okay, they have Taunt. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, One of the things there is like... I wasn't 100% sure whether or not they'd have Taunt, right? Because uh, a lot of times people like to use Scarf or Specs lately. And if you're using Scarf or Specs, it's a little bit harder to fit Taunt on. I mean, you could still use Taunt as like your failure move, right? Because you'll want like a Psychic type attack, Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam, and then a fourth, like Shadow Ball. That's not terrible though, right? I just knocked out what I think is like the biggest threat in the uh, Calyrex. So, could have been worse. They bring out Whimsicott. Okay, interesting. Well, you can't even, like, fake tears me. So Whimsicott's not really that scary here. I could switch out. What? Dynamax is on their end. Lander is in the late game? Steel Spike into the Lele slot is very free here, right? Is there any point in switching out? The reason to switch out would be to give something a boost, but I don't really see that much reason to switch out here. So I'm down to just Foul Play and Steel Spike the Lele slot. Because I want to knock that out so then Ditto can copy whatever my opponent's final Pokemon is. Light Screen. Very cool. Okay. Don't think that'll help him survive here though. We should still get the knockout onto Lele. Okay, we survived there. Nice. And if, if we don't care with Steel Spike, Foul Play certainly should finish it off, but... Yeah, we still get the knockout. Cool, and I break a Focus Sash on Whimsicott as well. And I have a defense boost. Like, I can't stress how good Dialga's move pool here is, right? Like, there are very few non-restricted Pokemon that can, like, reliably take its attacks just because it had such incredible coverage. And so getting that boost is really important because let's say my opponent's last Pokemon is Landorus T. Then what I can do this final turn is withdraw my Porygon out into Ditto, copy their Landorus to intimidate them, and then it's a question of whether or not I want to Hailstorm the Landers or Steel Spike slash Hailstorm the Whimsicott slot. Like, the question here I have is basically, does Whimsicott have Protect? And I think the answer is that it shouldn't. I guess one fear here is that you have Swords Dance with Landorus. So I can always switch out into Ditto comfortably here. The question is whether or not I'd rather Hailstorm or just get the Knockout onto Whimsicott. I think forcing a 4v1 in this position is fine, even if they are Swords Dance, because uh, we're going to Intimidate them, right? So they'll only be at plus 1, and Dialga will be at plus 2 defense. I, I really don't think Whimsicott's going to have Protect here, because 1, they have Light Screen, and that's like a move that you really... It's hard to fit, because you want like Tailwind Moonblast, right? Um, like Taunt, for example, often. Although Taunt doesn't make as much sense on their team here. Uh, they just go for Gleam. They didn't uh, max with Landers, though, so it is Swords Dance. Okay. So Hailstorm like, could have won me the game there, um, but I get to see their full moveset. I get a defense boost on both of my Pokemon, and it's 4v1 right now. The issue, obviously, is that now Landers can Dynamax, and it's primed to maybe sweep as a Dynamax Mon. Maybe Hailstorming there was better. Like, in my head, I was like, if we force the 4v1, then the decision-making becomes a lot easier. But, like, 
I don't know if I really needed to do that. Now they're only at plus one, and I'm at plus two defense with Dialga and plus one with the Ditto. Both of those are good news. I could see them even Swords Dancing again, which would be crazy. So let's see their moveset. Fly, Rock Slide, Sword Dance, EQ. Okay. Now you would think they just go for a ground type attack into the Dialga slot. To which I could switch out into Togekiss. Honestly, don't mind a double switch here. Because if they end up going for a ground type attack, I, I mean, the, the main reason is like, I think they should just max Quake into Dialga right now. And if I waste the turn of their max, and I can just withdraw the uh, Ditto back in to intimidate them again, I think it's very difficult for my opponent to win. But truthfully, Landris can pull off this uh, comeback right now. <laughs> actually, I forgot about Trace. Trace is so good for us right now. Um, for that reason, actually, maybe Diago could have survived an attack. So even though it's the worst case in them being Swords and Slanders, they still feel okay, but this is not over by any means. Like, my opponent can't come back. Okay, they actually just went for Earthquake rather than Maxing. Smart. But now I get to bring Ditto back in. And intimidate you again. And now you're at minus one. So you could, of course, Dynamax and start Max Air Streaming. I honestly think they might Swords Dance again right now, which is interesting. And if you Dynamax, you're really not that scary, right? So I will just Rock Slide and Dazzling Gleam here. Great play to not Dynamax, or sorry, not, um, yeah, great play to not Dynamax last turn. Yeah, they go for Swords Dance again, okay. So we got plus one now. Rock Slide does not miss, that's good. They still have Light Screen up. I think what's really awkward for, right, for them right now is if you actually Dynamax, you're in a weird spot. Uh, we didn't get the crit there, so if we crit, we probably just win the game immediately. But uh, you're in a weird spot right now, right? Because it's like, do you click Rock Slide? Um, they're at plus one. It's the last turn of light screen. They could Swords Dance again, but I think it's always fine to switch out into Dialga here and protect. Yeah. Maybe I should have just Hillstorm the Landers earlier, but I, I figured in that position maybe Landers has protect, but I guess the main thing is like Whimsicott never really does that much to us anyway, other than a potential Endeavor. That's like the one thing to watch out for. Okay, I'm guessing they're just rock sliding here. Perfect. But we could still lose this if Landris gets like infinite flinches right now. 88 down to 63. Yeah, so it really doesn't do that much. Light screen wears off. Uh, we can just roar of time here. Yep. We could steel beam as well. Um, because it's slightly higher accuracy, but roar of time does more. I think it's fine to just Roar of Time and Dazzling here. Yeah, they're they're going for double flinch here. That makes sense. Okay. You got a crit. I miss. Jeez. That was way too close for comfort. Uh, kudos to them, though, because they saw the right way to play this endgame. If they Dynamax there, they actually just lose the game because you just uh, don't, have, you don't like KO things quickly enough. Uh, they, like, they needed Rock Slide to double connect and then either for me to miss or for uh, flinches. So the odds were very much in our favor in that endgame, but, you know, if they get a double flinch, you, you would need a miss or a flinch on Dialga as well as a flinch on Togekiss, basically. So, you know, the, the odds there were slim, but it was, like, definitely not, like, so minuscule where you just don't go for it. Um, I could have read into that as well, and I guess like would draw Dialga out into Ditto. That may have been smarter, but yeah, that was an end game where I like felt decently confident maneuvering the one v four, and in the end it was fine, but it was definitely a little too close for comfort because if we have one disastrous turn, my opponent can actually still get back into it. So yeah, I just wasn't sure if they were even going to be Swords Lance Landers, which is why I was like not. 100% you know on uh hailstorming landers immediately because i just wanted to like make sure like yeah we we basically had a 4v1 but i think in retrospect there wasn't that much to worry about from whimsicott's end so it's like even if we let whimsicott stay around psychic train was still up for another turn or two so then like i don't have to 
worry about it going for attacks onto my side of the field quite yet. But in the end, it worked out, right? Like, but it, it, I guess it's scary uh, just because, yeah, like we're one very unlucky turn away from actually just losing that game. And that feels like unacceptable to lose given how well uh, the early game was. And given the fact that, you know, we were up through Pokemon essentially. Uh, but, you know, that like if there's ever a time to come back with a Pokemon, it's with something that can boost its stats. And Swords Dance Lander certainly is it. Sur Swords Dance Landorus is certainly it. And then my opponent actually played uh, really well with it, I think, where they like we're smart to not Dynamax, and I think if they had gotten baited into Dynamaxing, the game actually would have ended sooner. So, yeah, it's an interesting scenario there, but a fun one. So, yeah, let's look for another one. All right, third game of the day. I was honestly expecting another Calyrex Shadow Rider, but this one is Kyogre, but they've got Whimsicott and Charizard, so I'm, I'd be very shocked if Charizard did not have Sunny Day. Another really fast-paced team here. So, yeah, Porygon 2 has been really interesting. We haven't really used Gothitelle as much as the previous episode. Now, against Sun combos, like, as you may remember from our first game with this team, Landorus has Stone Edge, which can one-shot Dynamax Charizard. So I could go with Got the Tell plus Landorus. Hmm. Like, actually, Sunny Day stuff is really powerful here. Like, playing towards Charizard would make a lot of sense from my opponent's perspective. My issue with the Landers got to tell lead is if they lead Whimsicott Kyogre, which I think is also a very, very, very realistic lead combination from their end. I feel like I should be angling for Trick Room. So, what about, yeah, I mean, Gothitelle doesn't really do much past Fake Out, right? So what if we actually went with Landers and Porygon, where it's like, okay, well, if you Tailwind, then I can just Trick Room, and we go from there. And if you don't Tailwind, you Sunny Day instead, well, Stone Edge can just one-shot your Charizard. I think that's interesting. Dialg in the back and Ditto as the fourth. I'm not sure I love this matchup, though, uh, because I think both Charizard and Kyogre are incredibly, incredibly powerful, but I can't easily beat both with my lead. And the other thing is you should assume that Whimscott has, like, Sunny Day here as well, is Tailwind. So it's like you could go Whimscott, Kyogre, and just Tailwind Water Spout or Tailwind Max Geyser, or you could go Sunny Day and then just enable Charizard. But they actually go with Indity and Landorus. Wow, okay. How do I feel about this? Not bad, I guess. I mean, I get a... <laughs> I almost want to just click Fisher on turn one, just because I have not done that with this team. <laughs> but I don't think that is the right play here. However, honestly, this is not bad for us. I, I really think this is solid. Um, Okay, so my Intimidate went out first. Makes sense. We're Choice Scarfed. Before their Intimidate. And we shall trace Psychic Surge. Okay. White herb. Interesting. Okay. Um, I could go into Ditto, but I don't know if I love taking Expanding Force. I don't have U-Turn here, otherwise I would totally go for it. Like, I think switching out into Dialga turn one of this battle and then just clicking Trick Room generally feels okay. I want to use Ditto to copy the Landers and see what moves it has, because it totally could be a Swords Dance variant here as well. But even if it's Swords Dance, I can always just go back into Ditto and, uh, for a trace. Or sorry, to copy Intimidate. They go for Follow Me, which makes me think it's Swords Dance. Yep. Hmm, okay. This next one is so interesting. Do you end up going for a uh, Max Quake slash EQ? <laughs> I could Blizzard, but I think the place to go back out into Landorus for an Intimidate and then start foul playing into the Landorus slot. If they commit their Dynamax to Landorus right now, they're actually in really bad shape regardless of who they target, in my opinion. Um, well, actually not, not terrible shape. But I would prefer to see them maxing here. The best case would be them maxing and then targeting the Dialga slot with the Max Quake just for Landorus to ignore it. Uh, these Swords Dance Landorus are tricky. Uh, normally with Foul Play, I'd feel a little bit more confident, but Indy with Redirection is kind of annoying, and they are going to commit their Dynamax. Okay, cool. So the thing is, now you're only using plus one Landorus, and next turn I can actually just withdraw Landorus out into Ditto to copy your Intimidate again and bring you down to neutral. That's decent. And then the goal is to just stall up their Dynamax, right? Uh, Landorus T is not nearly as scary out of Dynamax normally, although in the end game of that last one actually was quite scary. 
Okay, I just go for follow me, so I'm gonna start chipping away at any with foul play. I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, made the read of me switching out and I'm targeting Porygon. That would be a good play, but even if they do that, I can just recover it off next turn anyway, so that's fine. Yeah, well done. They did not uh, get baited there. But, totally okay. 192... Maybe that's not so okay, actually. <laughs> that was a lot of damage. A little bit more than I had anticipated, truthfully. Okay, uh, well, I'm gonna go out into Ditto. And recover. Yeah, that was a lot of damage, wow. I thought we'd take that a little bit better, truthfully. Um, now I'm actually nervous we don't survive after this. Especially if they just go for an Expanding Force this turn. Which I think is a very likely possibility. Yeah, this was, um, I, I think White Herb also really threw me off. Oh, it's it's because of the White Herb, yeah. Um, okay, they go for another follow me. That's actually really good, because if I end up surviving this turn, uh, suddenly things are actually totally okay, because I'll have essentially just wasted all their damage, or they'll have wasted their uh, damage with their Dynamax. So let's see, we heal back up. I think we should take another Quake here. Let's see. I, I sure hope so. Okay, beautiful. That is perfect. And now we can switch back out for yet another Intimidate. Uh, part of the nuisance right now is that they have gotten a bunch of these boosts. Oh wait, I should actually just confirm their moveset first. What am I doing? Rock Slide, Swords Dance, Fly, EQ. Yep, basically the same set as previously. So we go back out into Landers once again, and then just go for Recover once again. And this is why like any Pokemon that can heal, like Porygon 2, you know, these bulky Trick Room users have so much utility because it takes so long to KO them. But this is where it's just fun using Ditto, right? Because we're using our opponent's Landris and just taking advantage of it. Um, okay. Yeah, this time around they don't go for Follow Me. I think if they'd actually just clicked Expanding Force last turn, I would be in a pretty tricky spot. Maybe they still get the knockout, actually, with Expanding Force anyway. Let's see. If they don't, though, we have completely stalled out my opponent's Dynamax. That's fantastic. Okay, we still take a ton. Oh, they actually go for Rockfall now. Okay, uh, probably trying to nail the switch in here, which makes sense. But, oh, that doesn't KO us. That's actually really annoying. <laughs> that was, like, the one time where we really wanted a knockout because you'd actually just give me a free switch into Dialga, and then with Dialga out, we're in such a good spot, right? Because then I can just start going for really powerful attacks. But the thing is, now they can actually go for another Swords Dance. And it's the last turn of Trick Room. They're at minus one. They're probably going to Expanding Force again. Ugh. I do think I can win the game with Dialga and Porygon, like, down 2-4 if I have full Dynamax advantage, though. So... I don't really want to switch out right now, because I think Conserving Ditto would be better, rather than having it take a lot of damage here as well. I'll go for Fisher. I think it'd be funny if we actually got it off, and I honestly don't think we have a slightly, like, a significantly better play here. If you're my opponent, Expanding Forest and Swords Dance with Landris makes a lot of sense. But even if you do that, I can just bring out Dialga now, and then with Dialga... Eh, actually, there was a reason to switch out there, wasn't there? It would have been so that I could intimidate with my own Landris rather than rely on copying them. Anyway, this is a really interesting early game, because it's been, what, like five turns essentially already. All right, there's a Swords Dance, okay. Here's the other interesting thing. Like, what attacks are you gonna go for? If you, uh, like, you can't Max Quick anymore, so you'd have to Earthquake and damage yourself, which obviously is not great for my opponent. So it's finally time to bring out Dialga. And with Dialga out now, what do we wanna do? They're at plus one with Landorus, so plus one EQ makes sense, right? Um. The annoying thing here is they actually boosted their special defense very nicely with both Pokemon. I don't mind maxing, going for max Warm Wind. Uh, actually, I like Steel Spike more in this position. Uh, do they have many physical Pokemon in the back? Not really, it's only Landorus. Hmm. I could also just go for the Hailstorm here. But I think NED going for a Follow Me certainly makes some sense. Um, yeah, okay. Warm went into Landorus. Trick Room this turn. So let's see. Uh, like, 
Infinity Protect and then them Earthquaking would make a lot of sense, and that would totally be okay with me, because then I Wormwind you, bring you down to neutral, I get Trick Room up, and then Porygon can continuously recover up even afterwards. I just, is Steel Spike better in this position? Because it's only a difference in terms of 10 base power between Wormwind and Steel Spike. Neither is getting the knockout here anyway, because they're at plus 2 Spideff with both Pokemon. Okay. Give me a helping hand. That shouldn't KO us, though. Oh, and we're faster. Well, that's a really pleasant surprise. Wait, is it a pleasant surprise? Because this means now I'm slower than them under Trick Room. Oi, oi, oi. Uh, okay. EQ. That is a lot of damage. Oh, but I guess I can foul play them now, right? So they're not max speed Landris. Hmm. White herb, this white herb sword stand set. Very, very cool. Uh, my main fear now is Whimsicott with Encore. Uh, that'd actually be such a doozy. Oh, but if you Encore me, actually, then I would just outspeed your Landris anyway, right? Yeah, never mind. We know Landris can't protect here either. Which is cool. Fortress of Trick Room. And they're at neutral... Uh, I just, I don't know if Foul Play KOs them. Hmm. Kyogre's gonna be their last one, surely. I here will just go for a Warm Wind. And a Foul Play. Okay. Oh, I should have Steel Spiked here, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> I just wasted my max move with Dialga. That was kind of silly. Yeah, I, I had a free Hailstorm there. Which would have just won the game. But they actually don't knock out Porygon anyway, so I think we're good. But I, I don't love that. I feel like I got slightly bailed out for making a suboptimal play. Uh, the reason I was Wormwinding was to cover for Landris going out into the Kyogre. But I think I need Foul Play to KO there anyway, right? If I don't, I probably just lose. Kyogre's my opponent's last one. Now I'm worried their Kyogre outspeeds my Dialga under Trick Room. Is that, if that's the case, then it's like, yeah, I really tossed the game by not going for the knockout on a Whimsicott last turn. Hmm. Okay, don't mind Hailstorming here, and then going for Recover. Actually, even if Kyogre outspeeds, I don't know if you not one-shot the, um, the Dialga. This was a really interesting game, but I rushed my moves a little bit last turn no, they do have protect okay not like that's like super shocking or anything uh, we'll get the recover off first which is good and the interesting thing here is i can also copy their kyogre with my ditto which is valuable who's faster okay we're faster cool um this in itself is a really big deal just because i changed the weather now it's really good damage in a whimsicott as well I don't think Wormwind would have one-shot Kyogre there, and if Whimscott doesn't have Protect there, then the game just ends from this. Water spell? Okay. Do I faint with both? Oh my gosh, I hang out with one HP. Yeah, it may have been smarter to just target the Kyogre in that position. Oh, jeez. Now we're going to be speed time between our Kyogres, which is going to be a doozy. <laughs> yeah, this um, this was not a game we should have lost. I, I messed up by Worm Winding that turn. I needed a cover. Yeah, that was just not smart. And then this last turn, too, I could have gone for Worm Winding to Kyogre instead, or even Quake into him. Either would have won us the game there. Still two turns of Trick Room. Given this moveset, I'm thinking they're choiced. It's choice or AV for sure, right? So I'm a Thunder into Kyogre here. And recover. <laughs> if there was any a time for us a uh, quick claw to activate, it would have been here. Okay, we win the speed tie. Well, actually, it might not be a speed tie if you're scarfed, right? That doesn't look like a Salt Vest to me, so I, I feel like they're Choice Scarf, yeah. Okay, cool. Then I think we're still good here. Oh, actually, uh, Porygon might faint from Whimsicott. 
No, we should survive queen here. Beautiful. Jeez, this game was stressful, though. I do not like how I played the end game of this one. It was just the one turn that I botched against Whimsicott. Like, that was it, really, right? But that in itself was a pretty bad mistake. Okay, Thunder always knocks out Kyogre. Um... Oh, but it's not necessarily... Well, actually, why would you Water Spout there if you weren't choiced, right? But it's not AV. It's just like Whimsicott moved after Kyogre. Okay, well, uh, I'm just going to Thunder and Recover again. <laughs> well, now I don't even get to figure out what the item on Kyogre is. <gasps> oh, that's so smart. That's so smart. That's so smart. Okay. Oh. Well done. Oh, but they, yeah, they, they are scarf locked, it feels like, or some choice item. There's no way you're not choiced, right? <laughs> choice specs make sense, given how much they were doing earlier. Uh, I mean, Ice Beam and Trick Room now. Okay, they actually end up forfeiting. Yeah, that had to have been choice specs Kyogre then, right? I don't see any other explanation for why you would uh, continue clicking Water Spell. And Dialga took way more damage than I expected from the Water Spell. So I think it's got to be Specs. That's the only logical explanation. It's not Scarf, right? Because the Whimsicott was still faster than the Kyogre since it was moving after Kyogre in the Trick Room. It's not Assault Vest given that they weren't changing their moves. So I Specs is the only logical answer there. But yeah, I mean, this was a game in which, like, I just uh, wasn't 100% sure if Foul Play was going to knock out the Landorus. I... Also should have played for the possibility that Dialga would outspeed Landris under Trick Room. The other thing I didn't consider was Helping Hand from Indy. I think that caught me a little bit off guard. Uh, and then so that was really scary. And yeah, like my opponent played the early game quite nicely, you know, and Swords Dance Landris is really scary. Now we were able to mitigate it and, uh, you know, playing with this late game Dynamax was really good. But yeah, it was just the turn where I ended up um, Worm Winding. Like I should feel fine Steel Spike into Landris there because... If you switch out into Kyogre, you're still taking a Foul Play into Steel Spike, and that adds up to about, like, 50% of damage anyway, uh, I think. So, uh, I didn't need to play so cautiously there, and I, I just, like, totally forgot, like, yeah, I let Warmer would just get redirected into Whimsicott, I would waste an attack there, um, because had I just gone for Steel Spike there, then, you know, that, that would have been just game over instantly, because then it's a 3v1, so, yeah. Sunny Day there in the end was really cool, I ended up protect, uh, attacking into the Whimsicott, and yeah, I, I think... The other thing is I wasn't expecting Dialga nor Porygon to faint the turn that I was up against Kyogre, so in my head I was like, well, even if they protect, we should survive the turn, and then Dialga would just get a Roar of Time or a Flash Can or a Steel Beam off the next turn. Uh, but then we actually fainted, so yeah, I think that's got to be Specs Ogre. Um, but I was not 100% sure until they kept clicking Water Spell, so yeah. Anyway, though, that's going to be it for this one, so thank you so much as always for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. This third game especially was really intense, but also the end of that second game, like... You know, even I would, even though this was a 3-0 episode, like, games 2 and 3 could have been a lot better, in my opinion. Uh, 2 was one in which, like, I didn't really ever see my opponent coming back down 1v4, but they actually had a non-zero percent chance to, so that's pretty scary. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna assume all Landers are Swords Dance from here on out, just because if they're not, then it's such an easier matchup to play against, but uh, I should just cover for Swords Dance a little bit better, and I didn't do the best job of that uh, in game 2, for example. So, yeah, but thanks so much as always for watching, and I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.